How's it going, everybody? Brian Alvarez here on Wrestling Observer Live. We are here every day, Monday through Friday, noon Pacific, 3 Eastern, Sunday, 3 Pacific, 6 Eastern. Friday here on the show, and we got a lot of news to get into here today. We've gone through the Raw, NXT, AEW reviews. So we'll get into some news and uh, preview shows over the weekend. And uh, don't forget, SmackDown's on FS1 tonight. For all of you ratings buffs. So we'll tell you about all of that, and then uh, we'll take your feedback today. 425-780-7566 is the phone number. That is 425-780-7566. Text me there, and we will read those today. Brian at WrestlingObserver.com is the email address. And, of course, you can follow me on Twitter at Brian Alvarez. You can subscribe on Twitter as well. If you want to be a super follower... And uh, get more than the normal Twitch plebeians get. And actually have decent conversations with people on Twitter amongst my uh, my subscribers. Mike Sebervivi is going to be back on the show today as well. So we'll find out what's been going on over the last couple of days with him. We got notes on CM Punk, the Dynamite Ratings, Cody Rhodes, uh, Kevin Owens talking about how perhaps they'll be doing indie dates soon. Not sure about that one. We got uh, Kota Bushi, an update on his status, and uh, a bunch of other notes as well. Eric Young heading back to WWE. So a lot of guys heading back to WWE, as we have been talking about over the last couple of days. So as noted, that's all the news. Text us, 425-780-7566. Lots to get into here today. And whatever's on your mind, if you'd like to direct the show, if you'd like to steer the ship, you can't, but you can help. You can be a first mate. Back in a moment, Observer Live. Back in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. And yes, Mike Sempervivi is here today. Where have you been, Mike? What, what is going on? I've been some places, Brian. Well, we've all been some places. What what's going on, dude? Well, unfortunately, we discovered not one but two leaks underneath our house, which filled up our crawl space and everything underneath there soaked it with water. So we've had mold remediators, we've had contractors, we've had insurance people all sorts of people to come out and take a look at things and to try to make things right. So those that's insurance where I've people been. heading out there to make sure you didn't purposely flood it with a, a, a hose or something. You thought, you know what? I would like an indoor pool. Sure, I'm going to pour let's, water in the basement. Yeah, let's start off with two feet of uh, of, of water, dirty water underneath the uh, the house. That would be a good first start to make the indoor pool become a reality. So, yeah, unfortunately, that's what we've had been going on here with people in and out and making noise and doing air samples and all that sort of stuff and whatnot. So, unfortunately, I missed the past couple of shows. Hopefully, you've been able to survive okay without me. Are you kidding me? I'm a professional. Did you even I realize I was am gone? I a professional. Did I you? realized enough to not say your name every time we came back from break. <laughs> you, you, Remember, you, Dom's not here today. You talked a little end. bit less. Uh. Brian was struggling. Get out of here, Puffin Zen. <laughs> I, I struggled the beginning of one show because we couldn't get the video on YouTube or Twitch. And I was oh, was that, somehow, was that my fault somehow, multiple too? Multiple people at the same time as I'm trying to also go over the news. <laughs> well, we do have news here today. We do. CM Punk is ready and willing to move to his next project. Dave Meltzer addressed the latest on Punk's AW status. Not any former world champion still under contract being paid by the promotion. Well, that is true. Punk heads of this weekend, Dave said, was still under contract AW being paid. Those close to him say the holdup on his being released is all on the AW side, as he is ready and willing to move to his next project. It said here that uh, following the November 23rd Dynamite, there was some speculation the Elite mocking Punk and referencing All Out in their match was teasing a future Punk versus Elite program. It was noted in the Observer, those close to the situation say there's, quote, no chance of that happening. I try to tell you guys that. No one listens to me. They wait for the Observer. According to a report from Sportskeeda, 
Punk is still expected to be included in the AW Fight Forever video game. A release date for the game still has not been made public. It takes a long time to delete people out of those games. I remember when uh, when Vince was in charge, and they would they would uh, they would have that video game in the works. But if you left WWE, they didn't want you in the game. And so the people that made those games hated their job because as soon as someone got fired, they had to get them out of the game. As soon as someone got hired, they could do whatever. So, uh, yeah. Punk Remember appears to they, still be in the game. They sent uh, Big Show down to Ohio Valley to Fat Camp to lose weight, essentially, and they had to pull him out of one of the N64 games. Who was that? Somebody in the Twitch chat. Remind me of who replaced Big Show in No Mercy or WrestleMania 2000, whichever one it well, was. Well, they put another head on a large man's body. Well, they basically, whoever they subbed him in with, they kept his move set. So it's like, I think you had to use the move set, and I don't know, it wasn't S.A. Rios, but it was somebody that they ended up throwing in at the last minute. Mm. Well, we've also got this dynamite on Wednesday. Let's get this over with fast. 870,000 viewers, down 1.1% from the Thanksgiving Eve episode. Second lowest Wednesday night audience for the show since june 15 point two six eighteen to 49 down 20 percent from last week that's a mud. bad demo bro that's a bad demo mm. but you know in, tr- in, in terms of viewers i actually still don't know where this charted i have no idea because you see this uh this nielsen company golly you think you think whatever you think is behind the times nielsen takes the cake they have a holiday and they can't get nothing right they can't get ratings out for days. Then they get these charts that are all messed up. I think the chart was all messed up. Like a bunch of shows got a 0.0, which I don't think is what those shows actually got. But anyway, uh, in terms of viewership, I mean, everyone, you know, you know it is on the Internet. Raw does the biggest first to third hour drop in the 30-year history of the program. And it's like, nah, you know. And then, uh, you know, AW does... Not a great number, and it's like, man, they got to pack it in. It's done. <laughs> the viewership of this show was almost identical to the viewership of the show last week. Literally, almost absolutely, completely identical. The difference was Jericho and Ishii did better in the final quarter than the Young Bucks and Death Triangle. That's literally the difference in viewership was one main event did better than another main event. Now, of course, because the Death Triangle and the Bucks didn't do as well as Jericho and Ishii, well, yesterday was all about how they should be fired. Uh, they, they clearly, Tony, bet on the wrong... Bros, it's a week. Can you guys calm down? Yeah, the demo's not good. And yeah, the show in general, the demo has been dropping for a long time now. But dude, you guys got nothing else to do on the holiday season? Go put up a tree. Put some decorations on the tree. Go online and find some some goofy decorations, maybe like a you know a well, ding dong that, or whatever. Look, if that's not your whatever thing, whatever you hang from your tree, go for go it. Out, go outside and plant a tree. That might be even a better option. Plant for a tree. You. you know, what you can do is Please. donate to Whale Scout because the newest the newest auction is up on my Twitter right now. It's already over a thousand dollars. You know Ooh. what I discovered? What's that? If you plug the Brian and Vinny auction on the Brian and Vinny show, it does better than if you don't. Glad you were able to come to that deduction. <laughs> so anyway, it's on my Twitter right now, <laughs> at Brian Alvarez. You can go up there and check it out and uh, and donate. You, you can write it off on your taxes. Yeah. And I know a lot of you want to write stuff off on your taxes. What could be better than writing yeah, off a chance but, to co-host the Brian and Brian, Vinny show? Look, will you just take the money? If somebody wants to come on and then talk about how AEW is in the mud for these demos and wants to yell at Craig about it, are you going to let them do that? Bro, listen, if you want to donate $5,000 and be a co-host on the Dynamite show and sit there and be stupid for an hour, that's fine. It's one show. You're not getting to be a permanent co-host. You're just some bloke coming on for the day. And I know that some of you saw Dragor and you thought, I cannot live up to that. Bro, you'll be fine if you want to do the show. There, We haven't had one guest host who didn't end up being fine because, uh, you know, you're not by yourself. We're all there. And the expectations are low. Yeah, of course. It's a Brian and Vinny show. <laughs> what do you think this is? Oprah? Oprah? Sure. Aren't you behind the times there? Well, I mean, just throwing out some show that, like, had expectations. Aye. There's no expectations on the Brian and Vinny show. <laughs> 
Cody Rhodes, according to Dave Meltzer, his recovery is going well. He's been working heavily with top-level trainers, put on size and strength, hit 240 pounds legit, which may have been the thickest he's been in his life. He's back to normal when it comes to his ability to train and lift. No word on when he'll be back, but it makes sense for it to be a surprise. Well, I did speculate number 30 in the Rumble is not uh, is certainly not out of the question. Hmm. And uh, just like with Cena, I mean, even if he's not 100% ready, he can come back and throw some geek out, take some time off, you know, be on TV but not wrestle. Let and me then throw next this thing at you, know, though. he's ready. Here's the thing. With a lot of people knowing that Kevin or Kevin Owens, that Cody Rhodes is going to be coming back, do you want to maybe hold 30 for somebody else? And I'm not saying The Rock, but almost anybody else, even a comeback, I, Randy Orton, obviously he probably won't be ready in time. But do you save that? Because there are people that know, okay, Cody coming back is going to be in, imminent. Well, you know, I'd, uh, I'd have him come out at 29. That's what I'd do. Have everybody expecting he's going to be number 30, and then they think 29 is going to be, uh, I don't know, James Ellsworth making a big return. But it's actually Cody, and the place goes crazy. And he throws a bunch of geeks out, and then number 30 is James Ellsworth, and he gets quickly eliminated. Santino? Yeah, Santino or whoever. <laughs> Booker T. Somebody. While doing commentary, please. Somebody. Bring that back. Bring back one TNA thing just for one night. Booker T doing commentary on the Royal Rumble while he's in it. Back in a moment with more Observer Live. Back in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sempervivi, also of WrestlingObserver.com. If you want to text us today, we'll get into those in a while. 425-780-7566. That is 425-780-7566. Or email Brian at WrestlingObserver.com. You are right. You look tired. How Has it been you. that stressful without me? How dare you. I feel great. Okay, just just asking. Need a little sun, a little zinc, something. Of all people, Mike. Of what do all you mean? people. I'm the model picture of health. God. Holy smokes. Slim good body right here, baby. In the li- Well, that was an outright lie. I mean, the other ones were lies, but not outright. In the latest edition of the Observer Newsletter, Dave gives an update on the status of old Kota Ibushi, who did not call old Kota Ibushi, but he is older than you'd think. His contract is scheduled to expire at the end of January 2023. (laughs) Nothing, he says, is definitive regarding whether he'll be staying with New Japan or leaving. Well, you know, I have no inside information, but I'm not sure he's clamoring to return to New Japan after the last... uh, (laughs) The last year, he's doing light training. His injured shoulder has held up well, and uh, I mean, we'll see what happens. If his shoulder is is doing great, I mean, man, I wouldn't be surprised in the least if he went to AEW. Yeah. He has been on very, very bad terms with New Japan for quite a while now, and we're not just talking he's mad about this or that, but I mean, there was a situation involving his mother as a result of all of this. And, uh, you know, I heard about that. I know friends of his that heard about it. And it was like, uh, I don't know if this guy's ever going back. But we'll see. It's wrestling. It's wrestling. Well, and, you know, he's had a lot of internal issues, you know, too. So if you want to try to put some positive spin on it, it's Kenny Omega is going over to work with Will Ospreay. He doesn't have to do that. He's not required to go do that. He wants to go do that. And I don't I don't know Kenny Omega personally, but I look at his relationship and everything that's been reported and how it's played out over the years, his friendship with Kota Ibushi, and I would would say that if there want if, if if there's a barometer that's looking in a positive direction, it's that he is going back. And I think if the relationship with Ibushi was as bad as it was months ago, there's no way I don't think that he would be going and doing anything for New Japan. Will Osprey and he can work in AAA. He can they can work in almost anywhere else. So. You know, I, I hope that that's more the case. I would love to see Kota Ibushi re-sign with New Japan. I don't know if that's going to happen. But there was a lot that was left undone because of the injuries and because of the pandemic and everything that took place. And we never got to really 
get what we wanted out of Kota Ibushi taking that torch from Okada and from Tanahashi. And although he's almost their age, at least giving something new to New Japan for a little while. And unfortunately, really all that never played itself out. Kevin Owens did a big interview talking about a lot of things, Sami Zayn and Roman Reigns, and also said the new WWE regime, it's not out of the question, he said, that he could work some independent shows down the line. I'm very deeply rooted in the independent scene. That's where I came up. I still have so many friends there. There's a few independent companies that are still very near and dear to my heart that I'd love to maybe one day show up back on just for fun, whether it's a promo, maybe it's a match. That stuff that over the years, I've always kind of thought, hey, man, it'd be really cool if I got to do that one day. Now it feels like more of a possibility than ever. Doesn't mean it's going to happen, but it feels like it could now. Well, I'll put it this way. I don't think it's going to happen. But, you know, if you ask me, is it more likely to happen now or more likely to happen two years ago with Vince in charge? Well, now for sure. Vince never would have let Nakamura go and have that match with Muda. Never. Never would have happened. And he wouldn't have let Carl Anderson go and drop the never open weight title to Hikaleo. Triple H is fine. Actually, he is fine. If he wasn't fine, he wouldn't have done it. So is it impossible? No. Is it likely? No. Is it more possible now than before? Yes. I will say that. I'm glad you read the whole thing because there were a lot of people taking the clickbait portion of that saying, well, Kevin Owens can work the... No, it's not what he said at all. It, he, he said what Brian relayed to you and how it is still a pipe dream but you know they have a deal with wxw in progress they bought those libraries it's not like they're on terrible relations with any of those groups he could go and actually do something if they wanted him to and the only thing i will say is they did let kenta go back to noah so it has happened before where under vince there is somebody who went back but the opportunity for somebody more than a Nakamura who they're not using at all to go back and actually do something somewhere, I guess it is increased a little bit. It's just, unfortunately, the the, the thing with a Kevin Owens, a Roman Reigns, a Sami Zayn, a lot of those guys, you don't want to take the chance that they go get injured. And I know people would be are pulling their hair out hearing that, but when you have so few stars and you have so few people that – you know, that are important to you, the odds of them ending up on any independent show ever, unless they're gone, is very, very small. Eric Young is returning to WWE, it appears. He was written off storylines in Thursday's Impact on Access. That's putting it mildly. Where he appeared to be killed. Shivved. By fellow Violent by Design member Deaner in a vignette, in a vignette taped in a prison. Hold on a second. Hold on. Yes. Second. Where's Lance? Hold on a minute. I know. Okay. He didn't write this one. I, it's not that he wrote it or not, but... Uh, <laughs> hey, can you be the agent for the stabbing? No, no, here's my point. I don't even care that he got stabbed in the heart and killed in storyline. I mean, that's ridiculous, but the bigger issue is you're telling me that they got permission to go into a prison with a sharp knife and film well, a killing? That's what it you're was, telling me? This could not have know. been in a real prison. I don't well, buy that for a second. It could have been an old prison used as a set now or something like that. I mean, isn't that what they do, Alcatraz? They, they film movies there and they take people on tours and whatnot. Maybe they, they found that. I don't know where they filmed this. Were they in Vegas? Maybe they have some set up there. If they filmed it in Vegas that weekend, they were there. But did you have any experiences with Cody Diener when you were in uh, Ohio Valley? Was he not there at the time? Uh, I don't remember, but I like Cody Diener. I like Big him as fan a of the person dust. now that he killed someone with a gimmick. From Yeah, from Dup Cup to an Oz stand-in. I do like this uh, note from PW Insider that the vignette was filmed in secret. <laughs> what, you, what, is, <laughs> what, out of shame? Out of the fear of somebody calling the police? First off, what exactly was? does that mean? And what's the alternative? They snuck, <laughs> they snuck into the prison secretly with a knife? And film this? They didn't this do it promotion. live on NBC. It was secretly filmed. They have shot somebody. They have killed a kid. Uh, <laughs> there has been... Was Mickey James not tied to the train tracks? Like No, she was thrown into the path of an oncoming train, if I recall correctly. thrown into a path of a train. Yeah. 
Which to me, it's like if you're gonna throw someone in the path of an oncoming train, you should have just tied her to the tracks and had you know somebody with a long beard be twiddling. Like Dudley do eh. right. <laughs> yeah, should have just done that. I mean, if you're gonna do it, do it. And then don't bring her back to life. I wonder if, I wonder if that get... train gimmick was filmed in secret. <laughs> <laughs> don't want those Amtrak people coming after you. I always love. How did she? How did they write her back into the show? Do you remember? I don't remember, but I mean, she's she must not get hit by the train. Clearly, she just was thrown. You know. I guess so. I love that whenever it is reported that something was filmed in secret, or when uh, you know something happens and it is it is. Uh, we are alerted it was without warning. As if normal, normally there would be a warning before rocks fell on your head. You know, if you're hiking, you know, a rock fell on his head without warning. It's like, well, what warning would there have normally been? A sound? Yeah, like there's a horn on the mountain when the <laughs> rocks start falling. Of course it's without warning. It's some guy screaming down. Hey, look out, there's some rocks! Yep. Uh, yep. Too late. Yep. Damn thing. Hmm. Well, let's do some uh, feedback here. You know what I'm tempted to do today? Don't get mad. I'm not saying I'm going to do it. But uh, tempted to uh, open up the phone lines. But we'd have mm. a gimmick today, and that would be I would ask for really stupid callers. So then if the callers are good, it's like an improvement. And if they're stupid, it's what you were all expecting. Hey, look, that's a good way to live your life, kids out there. Just aim low. That way you're really never disappointed. Stupid lines, we could call it here today. Person says, I genuinely, I genuinely hope Cody just wins the Rumble and then the title at WrestleMania. I am dying for something new and fresh. Do Rock versus Roman on night one. That's what I've suggested. Rock versus Roman and Cody gets the winner the next night. Very hey. easy to do. Cody going over the Rock? Like the Rock giving back to Dusty. Hmm. <laughs> DJ says, no phone calls or I walk forever. <laughs> Forever? He's, he's been having a week, hasn't he? I guess, man. I can't do phone oh, calls. Are you going to walk forever? Damn, Deej. That's a terrible thing to say. Just walk for the segment and then come back on Monday. I mean, it's a, it's a radio show on the radio. At some point, we have to take telephone calls. That's kind of in the, uh, kind of in the contract. Let's see what else we got here. The people making fun of that bad dynamite rating. Who are saying the ship is sinking and the sky is falling? Hope they realize Monday Night Raw, despite doing a commercial free gimmick this week, suffered. Yeah, we talked about that. And wait till you see the SmackDown rating next week when it's on FS1 tonight. Mm. Yikes. Because I don't remember them plugging that last week either. No. But yeah. I don't know if it matters. They seem to always get around, was it, 870,000 or whatever the number is? Like, that's. I think people just show up to FS1 going, what's on? And then they just leave it. Back in a moment with more Observer Live. Back right in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sempervivi, also of WrestlingObserver.com. Cannot believe the intolerance to dumb calls. It's stunning to me. I've been listening to uh, old Art Bell. You want to talk about dumb callers? God, we don't even approach that. He used to do five hours of open lines a night. You know how many dumb calls that guy got in one night? Now... Well, yeah, this person gets the alternative is DJ becomes a voluntary call screener. So you guys don't get about call screen. It doesn't matter. If you're an idiot, you just lie to the screener, and then you yeah. become an idiot on the air. What does, what, how can a call screener help? How, how, how can I ensure that only smart people call? How? I, I think it's impossible, Brian. I mean, I guess, I guess I could do like a math equation, and the answer is the phone number. And then, like, the only way that you can call is if you're smart enough to figure out the equation. But that doesn't mean you know anything about wrestling. It's true. It just means you're a mathematician. Hmm. And, and I know way more about wrestling than math. That's true. Let me That's tell you. That's true. Hmm. How far did you get in high school math? Because I got to be honest, for me, like, unfortunately, they put me in football math there for a while. But uh, I think I got up to, uh, was it Algebra 2? No, that's when they said, no, you can't do this anymore. And if you want to graduate, get in football math. How hard did you get, Brian? I don't know. But this person says, make it so Twitch homies can call only. Hmm. Well, they do do a better job. But how are we going to, like, make sure that they are the official authentic Twitch homie? Well, there'd be a phone number that is only put in the Twitch chat, but uh, ah. I mean, I, I, 
I still don't like, know if that's the solution. I've to this met problem. some of these people. Sam is a good example of somebody who I'm sure could call up and actually engage us in some witty, intelligent conversation. I am sure that there are some other people in this that are not DJ Convoy that can call up and actually give us some intelligent conversation. Can you not be in the Twitch chat and on the phone at the same time? Come on, show your wares. You, you guys, guys call in. You guys want Jingu to call and just talk about stardom for like the next 30 minutes? <laughs> Adam Summers does. Well, you know what? I'm going to go through some of these text and messages filthy. here. And then if, if I don't get anything good in the text message bin, I am going to open up those phone lines. You hear me? Pressure's on, folks. Text fingers. Let's go. Are these people going, you want me to call? Yeah. What do you think I open up the phone yes. lines for? <laughs> of course you should call. Come on, fuck. Especially if you don't like the other callers. Call and do a better job then. Savvy at 9583. Right out loud. People complain about the calls but then refuse to call. Cowards. I'm not going to call him a coward, but crying I'll out call loud. you a coward. I did not come back to this show after all this crap that I've had to deal with without getting an intelligent phone call from one of you geeks in the Twitter. Well, so come on, hey, listen, damn it. First off, calm Twitch, down. whatever the hell it is. Second off, uh, I mean, we got, we got way dumber people texting than calling, if that makes you feel any better. Lowest demo of all time. What a joke of a show. What show are you talking about? AEW, I guess. <laughs> they did talk about FS1 last week. You'd know if you watched the show. Uh, I did watch the show. But you know what? They did a poor job then. Uh, so Is this is this like explaining why uh, nah, some Hangman right. was so upset at I, I should have taken a call right in that guy's text message. <laughs> what are Mike's thoughts about the MGF segment? I don't even know if he saw it. <laughs> I did see it. I did see it. Look, one thing that everybody keeps forgetting about here, and Stokely Hathaway talked about it a little bit when it comes to what was happening with the firm and every all those plans that went out the window, he's scrambling right now. They are trying to figure out exactly what they want to do, and they had a lot of things that went sideways once Punk was gone. And I'm not saying that it could not have been done better, it could not have been done faster or anything, but you're also watching a first-time booker and owner of a wrestling promotion now deal with things on the fly. And I liked Danielson running out there. I liked MJF turning on Regal. I'm cool with that. It's just from here, where do they go with that? And unfortunately, there's still a lot of pieces that they need to kind of meld back together, but obviously they're linking up Hangman and Moxley. Takes care of them for a while. We got MJF and Regal. And now we got to see what happens with the firm and, and some of the other things. But, again, we're watching somebody try to learn on the fly here and try to make something happen. I didn't hate it at all. It says, wouldn't New Japan get mad at AEW if Kota Bushi signed with them? You realize the Young Bucks left New Japan and signed with AEW. And yeah, Kenny Omega New Japan really care about New that? Japan and signed with AEW. That they cared about. And it's not like Kota Bushi is, is uh, you know ousted they would like him to come back but if he doesn't want to come back and he goes to AEW I don't see that destroying this relationship says, they would let him back <laughs> don't worry Dynamite along with several other shows were missing from Show Buzz Daily's list was there some error on their end or Nielsen's I think there was an error with what list you were looking at and also the Nielsen list it might have been two things but yes we have not gotten a great chart yet for uh this is still baffling. You know, if you have YouTube TV or if you have most of the streaming services, there is a, a mention on there about Nielsen ratings. So they are pulling things automatically. And it's just amazing that in 2022, when it comes to especially pay-per-view rates, at least when it comes to TV ratings, you have this share of this person in the house or that. When it comes to pay-per-view buy rates... You click on a button. It's been this way for years. Or you call a number. Those numbers should be easily accessible almost the next day, almost immediately. So why this is still some sort of hustle, and that's what it feels like at this point, I don't know, but it stinks. You know, everyone angry about calls. You guys forget that the last time I opened up the phone lines, we had that guy calling about Dynamite, and he goes, you know, if I had a stock... Yeah, but look how much Bro, material, I had material you were for able weeks. To get out of that. For weeks, I had material after that call. He might have been the same guy that's talking about the, uh, you know, you'd know if you watched SmackDown. I do. You want me to review SmackDown? I watched the whole show. I can tell you all about it. Sorry, I missed the, uh, the, uh, whatever. This reminds me of the your effing lying thread from the Ultimate Fighter from years ago. That guy didn't have glasses. He, no, it was uh, they, didn't have, they didn't have graphics on the screen. Which they didn't. They edited them in later. Now, 
Whose AEW World Championship run was the best one so far, in your opinion? Dude, there were a lot of good ones. Till CM Punk got the title and got hurt and then got in a fight. I mean... For some people, that what's that's first what's made Jericho it run was great, and <laughs> you know Moxley was a, a champ when he had that title. Uh, twice when he wasn't even supposed to. Think about that. Think about that. Twice he wasn't even supposed to be champion. He became champion. And he was great. Maybe probably he's going to win Wrestler of the Year. Would be my guess. Hmm. Let's see. This person says Jade had a stalker. So Tony Khan decided to bring the guy in. Is that the story? Well, that's what it looks like to me. Well, I don't know if he's a stalker. Well, hold on a minute. He just thinks she's fine. He, he, uh, okay, what's going on? You know what's what happening. Mean? Explain Bow the storyline wow. to me. Bow Wow hollered at her on social media, and she wasn't having that. And so she didn't like being disrespected or being hollered at over social media. So she took the baddies, went to his concert, ran up on him. He still said at the end of that as the security guard who had the best job in the world, carrying away Layla and, uh, and, and Tasha. I mean, that was just lovely. But, hey, she still looks good. And he's still going to be wanting to, to uh, sum a Jade. And obviously, Jade is not that upset about this. She hasn't gone to authorities, hasn't put up a restraining order. So he's still trying to holler at her. <laughs> Bro, in storyline, in storyline, she wants nothing to do with this guy. So he contacted Tony Khan and he said, I want to appear on the big screen during her championship celebration, and I'm going to proposition her again on national television. She still wants nothing to do with him. And then he concluded with, I'm on my way. That's what the story is. That's what's actually happening. You guys can make up whatever story you want, but that is what's happening. Wait a second. You're treating this like it's The Miz and Dexter Loomis, and like Dexter no, Loomis that one is I in the was, house with the kids. I think that one was worse. That was worse. I'm pretty sure it was worse. That was much worse. Yes. I didn't say Mike made up anything, but Mike left something out. Did he I say left, Tasha? I meant Kiera. I'm he sorry. left out. Don't even get me started. What? What? Uh, let's see what else we have got here. Don't get you started on what? Um... Which, by the way, it's a shame that Tasha Steeles did resign with Impact. That way she can't go to AEW and team with Kiera Hogan again now that she's, you know, not a baddie anymore. She's a goodie or whatever it's going to be. So this, DJ says what Mike said is exactly what's happened. Yeah, it's exactly what has happened, but he left out what happened on Wednesday, which is Tony Khan allowed Bow Wow to appear on the screen to proposition her during her championship celebration. She wanted nothing to do with him, and now he has threatened to come see her. See, you don't okay? know. You don't That's know That's what this. he said. No, you know how this TMZ nonsense work, all this paparazzi people in the media, they say they don't want this, but then they set up these pictures, and I don't, I'm not down with that person, but they're actually working into cahoots and actually like putting out a, a public front, even though they're, they're behind the scenes working together. Come on, man. Person says, after MGF hit Regal, I thought I heard fans chant, you deserve it. I didn't hear the you deserve it chant, but I definitely saw them cheering after he got his revenge on this guy. I can't believe people chanting that. Bow Wow is Snoop's nephew. You know, I, I hesitate to even say this because I don't want anyone writing anything stupid. But, dude, let's, let's just say, and I don't think this has happened, okay? I don't think this has happened. But let's just say they had hired the former Sasha Banks. Bro, if this is her entrance into the company, Bow Wow bringing her in in this storyline, no. No! I like it. Absolutely, positively, absolutely, positively not. I will not stand for that. That will be, that will be, no. No! Yes. Yes. Let's see. No. I'm not even reading these texts. <laughs> yes, because I want you and Vinny both to then act out all of the verbiage that takes place between Jade and Mercedes. It will be fantastic. And you know what? Get Craig in there. He can be Bow Wow. And then Granny, whoever else pops up on the screen. It'll Craig be is going to be Bow Wow. <laughs> 
Did you just say that? Big bow wow. What are you going to do to those kids who put all that snow behind your car? Nothing. Nothing. I already, I already shoveled it out of the way. You don't think I can shovel snow? Huh? Look at Is me. Is that why you look like look that? Look at me. That's why it looks like you have an heart attack. My dad was out there shoveling snow. He's 80. I come from hardy stock. Yeah, what a bastard son you are that you don't even go over and take that snowblower that you have made of gold go over there and help your poor father out. Oh, my God. You think my father alerted me that he was about to go outside and shovel snow? I heard about it later from my mother. I was like, what is he doing? He's 80. I'm like, I don't know. He's an Alvarez. We're hardy. What's going on with Charlotte? I don't know what's going on with Charlotte. I do not know what's going on with Charlotte. And I don't know when she's going to be back. Doesn't mean she couldn't be back tonight. I don't know when she's going to be back. I, I have no updates on Charlotte Flair. At this point, it might as well be the Women's Royal Rumble. If you're doing both in January, which I know that was a different conversation for a different day, but they probably are, save it for them. Because at this point, I don't know why you'd bring her back. I don't think it's going to really help pop a rating or anything like that. This person here says, a person who texted about FS1, which is this person. <laughs> Hasn't called since March of 2021. So I banned you. Is that, is that what happened? That's what it sounds like. So so uh, a, a different a different person than the uh, person talking about their stocks. If I had stocks! That's got to be one of the funniest things ever on this show, I thought. I don't know about the rest of you. But that's in my top ten. That guy who called about the dynamite number. If I had stocks! Then that same week, SmackDown's down 70-something percent because it got put on a different channel. Hmm. If I had stocks. Well, anyway, I do have stocks and a gold snowblower. Back in a moment, Observer Live. Well, I ventured into the YouTube chat. Ooh. Yeah, I wanted to uh, I wanted to try and figure out who it was that called if they had stocks. I got to find out who this guy is. <laughs> Nobody would admit it. Mm -hmm. This call was so stupid, okay, that first off, no one in the YouTube chat will admit it. And second, this guy that had the dumb text that opened up this segment, even that guy had to text me back to, to just insist it wasn't him. <laughs> That's when you know you had an all-time stupid call. I had stocks! My stocks were in... Well, at least that person's got a level of self-awareness that, oh, I don't know, Ryan or his brother in Cumberland, Maryland never had. Do you think Insane Clown Posse will ever make an appearance on AEW? They have been in every major wrestling company. Bro, I like the clowns. Juggalo, baby. They always did a good job in wrestling. Fago for everybody. Yeah, I had a great, great interview with Violent J. Like 15 years ago. It's in the archives. Did you ask him how magnets work? WrestlingObserver.com. Man, that was, a, that was a great show. Yeah. Anyway. Would now, look, would you come back? Because they've had, look how many people have worked a Juggalo show. If they have well, a wrestling show in the Northwest. Violent could... J is having health issues, so. Oh, well. But yeah. doesn't mean that they can't put on a show. I mean, if, it, if, I, if it could be me and Filthy Tom against Violent J and Shaggy Too Dope, God. you and Filthy Tom what against a match the drug that would be. <laughs> what a match that would be, bro. All right, Brian. If I fly over the Christmas show, can I come in? LOL. Eh, we talk. I said I don't know what's going on with the Christmas show, and this room isn't what it used to be. So, <laughs> especially after Tom threw up in yeah, it. Yeah, after Tom threw up. Things changed. This man's got small children now, and I got one was kids. And yeah, I don't want to be an idiot. I may not drink it all this year. Yeah, right. That's, my, that's what I'm vowing right now. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, hey, we're out of time. Check out the auction at the top of at Brian Alvarez on Twitter, and uh, get a cameo. All proceeds this month go to Whale Scout. Hundred percent. If you get a cameo from me, so that's a good way to donate and get something fun out of it. And uh, we are out of here, everybody. Thanks, Mike, as always, callers and listeners. Everybody in the studio, Twitch homies. Even those on YouTube that answered and lied. We'll talk to you next time. Wrestling Observer Live.